السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, most gracious, most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين. All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, Lord of the worlds, Creator, Nourisher, Cherisher, Sustainer, Provider, Protector, Curer, the one in whose hands lies the absolute control of every single aspect of existence. We praise Him. We glorify Him. We seek His mercy. Wassalatu wassalamu ala afdal al-khalqi ajma'een nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddini wa ba'd. We send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, all those who followed the footsteps from the beginning. May Allah make us from amongst them and may Allah bless every one of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our offspring, those to come up to the end and keep them all steadfast. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it brings a smile to the face that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness yet another month of mercy, another month of forgiveness, another month of goodness, another month of growth closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is indeed a gift that we need to make the most of. For indeed, he who exits the month of Ramadan without the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at a loss. So we make an intention here and now. Oh Allah, we will quit our bad ways and habits, not only for this month of Ramadan, but for every day and every year and every moment of the life that you give us thereafter. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us savior from the difficulties and calamities of this life. You and I know when we were created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, does mankind think that it is sufficient for him to declare that he is a believer or she is a believer and then we don't test him or her in that regard. Indeed, we have tested those before them in order to distinguish between those who were truthful in their claim of belief and those who were liars. So when you say you're a believer, you've entered into the fold of Iman. Now Allah will test you. For as long as you were not a believer, what was the point of the test? Do you ever see people walking outside a school while the examination is going on being called upon to come and write an examination in the school when they have not yet entered or enrolled? It is absurd. Nobody would do that. The same applies. People say we are Muslims. Why do we face many difficulties? That's because you have entered the school. You are the one who's going to be tested. Those who are outside the school, they will not be tested to the degree and to the tune of your test. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly states, Inna allaha idha ahabba abdan ibtalah. Indeed, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his worshipper, he will test him. Because the more he tests you, the more opportunities you have to pass the examination. And when you pass one examination, guess what happens? You go to a more difficult one. When you pass one stage, even in your computer games, you go to a next stage which is not as easy as the first one. Subhanallah. Why do I give an example of computer games and I see even older people smiling? Because today, even the elderly are hooked upon some of these games. You understand? The same applies in our lives. We will be tested one after the other. Things will happen not according to my whims and fancies. What did I say at the beginning of today's opening speech? 
I said, in whose hands lies the absolute control of every single aspect of existence because that is not in my hands. It is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those tests and challenges, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a manual in order to look through so that we would know how to go through the tests. We know the answers for the questions that we will be asked through the tests. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad jaatkum maw'idhatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen O people, O people, Indeed, a reminder or a warning has come to you from your Rabb. And cure for the diseases of the heart. Cure for that which lies in the chest. Subhanallah. There is cure in what? In the Quran. In the revelation. In that which Allah has sent you. This is the month of the Quran. This is the opening lecture of this beautiful series that we are continuing from last year. It is important for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this Quran, there is cure, there is guidance, there is mercy for those who believe. If you believe, there will be mercy in it for you. Do you want to save yourselves from the calamities of this world? Well, then you need to know Allah has taught you how to do that. Do you want to save yourselves from the calamities and disasters of the hereafter? You need to know that Allah has taught you to do that. By revealing to you the Quran upon the most blessed of creation, upon the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sent him as a favor to myself and yourselves, to mankind at large, to creation at large. Subhanallah, do you appreciate that? Well, I want to tell you last year, in a masjid in Bosmont in Johannesburg, I had commenced a series known as the Save Yourself series. The idea was to comb through verses of the Quran that teach us how to live life in a way that we protect ourselves from the challenges that we face in life. What are the challenges? You and I know we face problems and difficulty of so many different kinds, subhanallah. And saving ourselves from that which lies beyond this very short life. If I were to ask you, how old are you? Perhaps some of you would say something. Let me tell you this morning I was asked, how old are you? And I said, well, you know, subhanallah, this is an interesting response because none of you will believe, isn't it? I was asked, how old are you? And I said, well, whenever I tell people that I am 63, they don't believe me. Did you hear that? How old are you? I was asked. So I said, whenever I tell people I am 63, they don't believe me. Do you? Because I'm not 63. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That's what I said. I said, whenever I tell people I'm 63, they don't believe me. And I paused for a moment and then I said, because I'm not 63, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The point I want to raise, the average lifespan of this ummah between 60 and 70 years. Those who've passed away have passed away for longer than 70 years. There are people who've passed away for a thousand years. They are gone. There are people who are on earth. We will never know who they are. Allah says, هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ رِكْزًا Do you even feel any one of them? Or do you hear the slightest sound from any one of them? You don't even know who they were, to be honest, unless you were told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man, we think we're a big deal. Yet, many of those who were more powerful than myself and yourselves put together, they had more wealth and more energy than us. They were more powerful. They ruled on earth. We don't even know who they were. So don't think you're a big deal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there was a time when you were not even mentioned nobody could even talk about you because you didn't even exist look at surah al-dahr allah says 
هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا Had a time not passed when man was nothing to be even mentioned subhanallah we weren't even a he or a she, nor were we an it. Because people couldn't refer to us, we didn't exist. And Allah says, you know what? There will come a time later on when you return to Allah. So my brothers and sisters, continuing from last year's theme, a beautiful theme, I decided not to go too fast. Because every time we comb through verses of the Quran, they are so interesting. We don't want to break the train of these beautiful verses and the lessons we learn from. Therefore, last year I did the first part of the series and today we have just commenced the second part of the series. And what I've chosen to do is to go through the last of the verses that I had already discussed at the end of last year's Ramadan and to start off with that because it is absolutely important for us to know how to save ourselves from the disasters of this world and here we begin. Surah An-Nur is the 24th surah of the Quran. It is in the 18th part from 30 parts of the Quran known as Ajza. What we, what we need to know is this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences it making mention of adultery, fornication, the prohibition and the punishment. You and I know that if you want to save yourself from disaster in this world, you need to save yourself from adultery. It will protect you from disease, from sickness, from the sickness that is external, from sickness that is internal. It will save you from playing hide and seek with your spouse and with others. It will save you from a lot of calamity. Subhanallah. Aren't we saying save yourselves? Well, Allah tells us, look, adultery is prohibited. Not because we don't want man to enjoy, but he must do it with due process. There is a process by which you will enjoy yourself. There is a process through which you will fulfill your base desire. If you do not do it through that process, you will never ever succeed. You will fail. In fact, you will not be saved from the disasters that will be resultant of your action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, number one, as Ramadan has started, we seek forgiveness for whatever immorality or immoral behavior we may have engaged in in the past. We will not do it again. And we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. May Allah forgive us. And from this day on, we will realize that to save ourselves from the disasters of this earth, as well as that which is to follow later, we will definitely protect ourselves from immoral behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us and our offspring protection. Ameen. So thereafter, and we know that it's very bad because it breaks your home, it will set a bad example for your children, and it is abuse of the opposite sex. Those who commit adultery and fornication, what are they doing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you really would like to fulfill your base desire, take the full responsibility of your action by marrying the person so that the resultant, the resultant children are taken care of in a respectable fashion. They have a mother and a father. They have parents who will take care of them, subhanallah. And you will be responsible for your action and your behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. But can I tell you what is worse than that? If a person commits adultery and fornication, they seek the forgiveness of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أُولَئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ Allah says, those who have committed immorality, those who have engaged in immoral behavior or those who have transgressed against themselves. Adultery fornication is included in this. 
and anything else which is immoral, immoral. Those who have watched, for example, and who are hooked onto pornographic videos or material, we need to understand you turn to Allah, Allah will forgive you. The month of Ramadan is a month of abstinence so that we can declare that we've become better people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he can bear witness that we have tried our best and we've achieved. Man jadda wajad, whoever works hard will achieve. Whoever does not work hard, how do they expect to achieve? You work hard on something, wallahi, you will achieve it. So this verse, Allah says, a person who's engaged in immorality, a person who's transgressed against himself or herself, needs to know that if that person at that point of sin remembers Allah and turns back to Allah, and seeks forgiveness for the sin and does not continue committing that sin, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for as long as that person knows that there is none to forgive sin besides Allah, Allah will forgive that person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are the ones that their reward shall be the forgiveness of their Rabb as well as paradise. They will achieve paradise, subhanallah. So it doesn't mean that you've committed sin in your life. You are doomed forever. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you jannah. He will grant you forgiveness and paradise if you seek that forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. So committing adultery, fornication, I've already explained partially how we would save ourselves if we abstained from it. If we realized what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. But more than that, worse than that is when you accuse others of the crime. Did you know that? When you commit a crime, you can seek Allah's forgiveness, He will forgive you. We just heard that. But when you accuse someone else to get forgiveness for that accusation, you need to go to that person and you need to seek their forgiveness. They may not be ready to forgive you because they are not ghafurun rahimun. They are not the most forgiving, most merciful. Therefore, be careful about the tongue. This tongue can actually destroy you. If you want to save yourself, protect your tongue. Think before you speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who accuse the chaste and innocent women from among the believing females. Verse number four of Surah An-Nur. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَجْلِدُوهُمْ فَجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَةً وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً أَبَدًا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Those who have accused the chaste women of committing adultery, they have just thrown an accusation or they have spread a rumor. Allah says, if they don't come up with four brilliant eyewitnesses regarding that act, then punish them. Subhanallah. And the punishment of the Sharia is made mention of here for, the, for those who are in authority over the land. If they are fulfilling the Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that the punishment of a person who accuses another of committing immorality or adultery should be 80 lashes in public. Subhanallah. And Allah says, don't ever accept any statement that they utter, any witness that they bear. They are liars. They are sinful in the eyes of Allah. Why? Because they created disaster in the ummah. We want to save ourselves from disaster. And here are people accusing one another of things. My brothers and sisters, let's be careful. Many a times you hear people say, hey, do you know those two are going out? They're going out with each other. What does that mean? Nowadays, ask the young people what going out means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. That is a dangerous statement. Do you know what you're saying? Is it a reality? If it is true and you're speaking behind their back, it is known as ghibah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Atadruna mal ghiba. Do you know what is ghiba? So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were inquisitive to know what is the ghiba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Dhikruka akhaka bima yakarah. Mentioning regarding your fellow brother or sister in their absence, that which if they were present, they would not have liked it. 
That is ghibah. What is the sin? The sin is that you bear the brunt of their sin. So you bear the sin that they have committed. It comes on to you because you're talking about them behind their backs. Why is it so sinful? Because we are meant to love one another to the degree that if one does something bad, we are supposed to want them to come back on track. So we go to them, we pray for them, we, we try to talk to them. We don't go out and become excited. Yes, I've got this on video. I'm going to publish it. I'm going to publicize it. I'm going to make sure the whole world knows about this. That's not the attitude of a Muslim. A Muslim, when he sees another committing sin, perpetrating that which is wrong, he wants to resolve the matter. He wants to protect his brothers and sisters on both sides. And he wants to try and ensure that the matter is resolved in a way that people are given a chance to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see someone drinking alcohol, visiting the nightclubs, perhaps gambling. All these are bad sins according to Islam. But we should have such a genuine feeling for one another that rather than going to expose and getting excited about it, showing that you don't care, you're not bothered about those who utter the shahada with you. You're not bothered about the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather than that, you should make dua for them, pray for them, supplicate, go and talk to them, communicate with them, try and resolve the matter. That is the quality of a Muslim. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked, what if what we are saying is actually true? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if it is true, then that is exactly what ghiba is. And if it is not true, then it goes one step beyond ghiba. It becomes known as buhtan. It becomes known as a slander. It's untrue. My brothers, my sisters, today we are living in the age, the age of editing. Photoshopping, video shopping. Have you heard of that? It's very simple for you to see a photograph. And yet it looks so true to you, but it is absolutely false. It never happened. It didn't exist. It is simple to superimpose today. A little child of five years old can do it using an application. And the world starts hating each other just because they witnessed one video that was totally video shopped. I always give an example of Hollywood. I'm sure many of us here have watched some movies. They look so real. Nobody ever died there. Do you know that? And how many are killed? It's a real movie. If they can create such a real looking movie that was just a movie, imagine what they can do today. That could happen years ago. Now they can make you dance in a nightclub. Just by having one picture of your face, they add it onto an app and suddenly you're doing the hip hop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. The next best thing you say, the Imam of our masjid, did you see the video doing its rounds? My brother, my sister, you are a mu'min, don't believe it. You know you cannot do that, your Imam cannot do that either. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. So verse number 23 of the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ لُعِنُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Those who falsely accuse the chaste believing women, those who are ignorant of what you are accusing them of, and they are innocent of what you are accusing them of, Allah says, for them, they have the curse in this world and the next. We want to save ourselves from curse. That's why we're talking about this verse. If you want to save yourself from la'na in the dunya and the akhirah, stop accusing people. Stop spreading rumor. Now someone might say, no, but I didn't start the rumor. I didn't start the rumor. So let me at least forward it so people can know what's going on. You know? Wallahi, we're all guilty of receiving messages and immediately... We have a whole list of people, tick, 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 it's gone. Before you know it, it's beamed to a thousand people and each one of them beams it to another thousand. Within 15 minutes, a million people have that message. Where did it go from? May Allah forgive us. It's dangerous. Allah says, the source is cursed. Not only the source, anyone who was guilty of spreading it thereafter is also a party to the crime. 
So don't. Subhanallah. Imagine Allah is saying a person who accuses others is actually cursed in the dunya and the akhirah. And Allah says, وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ They are going to have a great punishment. Sometimes Allah uses alim. Alim means painful punishment. In this verse, number 23 of Surah An-Nur, Allah says, a very big punishment. May Allah protect us. A lot of us think it's light. And this is why in some of the verses, as we shall see, inshallah, tomorrow, Allah speaks about this and He says, تَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيْنَا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ Certain things, you think they are very light. But in the eyes of Allah, they are massive, huge crime being committed. And you don't know. For you, it was the forward of a message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Now, I need to speak about verse number five of the same surah before I close for today. And that verse is regarding what should be done if I've already committed such a crime. I've already engaged in accusing others. I can taste it in my life. A lot of the times when you're struggling with your health, with your wealth, you've got problem after problem. You have disaster with your children, with your parents. You have a problem and a difficulty. These are matters we want to save ourselves from. We go from doctor to doctor, from pillar to post, and we don't know how to safeguard ourselves. A lot of the times you need to look within you. Have you spread a rumor about someone? If the answer is yes, perhaps you have achieved that curse that Allah speaks about. Maybe you have cursed yourself by talking about others. This is why a true believer saves himself or herself by not speaking ill about others. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, if you were and if I were only to speak good about one another, behind our backs, we would make a better ummah. Let's promise today and I challenge you, behind the backs of others, no matter who they are, do you promise that you will only say good things? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, even if it is your mother-in-law, by the way. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to say the best words. Look, there is a lot of goodness in every one of us, and we also make mistakes. Why only harp on the evil, making it seem like there is no goodness in the person? Speak about the good. If you don't have anything good to say, keep quiet. Whoever believes in Allah and truly believes in the last day of accountability, they will only utter that which is good or remain silent. Because they know if they say that which is bad, they will be held responsible in the dunya and the akhirah. So what if I've already done something? What if I'm struggling and suffering? Number one, seek the forgiveness of Allah. You know why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number five, regarding those whom he said are very sinful. Indeed, except for those who seek the forgiveness, they engage in tawbah, and they make amends, they change their ways and habits. Allah says, for them is forgiveness, for indeed Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Imagine a person who's done bad, they have been cursed, they are suffering in every way, they want to save themselves. The best way to save yourself from calamity on earth and in the next life is by seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And seeking the forgiveness of those whom you have wronged. Say, look, you know what, my brother, I wronged you. I'm very sorry. Forgive me. Please, I realize my mistake. But do you know what aslahu means? Aslahu means to make amends thereafter. If you have backbitten about someone, spoken bad about them, you now need to go around speaking good about them. You need to undo the bad that you did. You went around and you spread bad, you spoiled their name in community and society. Now that you've asked Allah's forgiveness, you must go back to the people whom you went to spoil that person's name and say, you know what, I was wrong. What I said was actually wrong and it was bad for me to say it. May Allah forgive me and may that person forgive me too. It is not easy to do that. For us, it's easy to ask Allah's forgiveness sometimes. But we are sometimes very proud. Our ego prohibits us from going up to the person. Please forgive me, my brother. Forgive me. Forgive me, my sister. I have wronged you. That's not easy. 
And Allah says, if you're ready to do that, we will ensure that you have mercy in this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Here we have commenced the beautiful month of Ramadan. We hope to be reading Taraweeh tomorrow again in a beautiful pace that we read today. I challenge you to come here early tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoy your time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be speaking about the verses whereby we can save ourselves from the calamity of this world and the next aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk